So I just finished up the review for this case by Cougar the Blazer. And by just finished up, I mean like five minutes ago. So we're ready for the next case, which is this monster here. This thing is massive. You could put a license plate on it and take your family camping in it. This is the new Conquer 2 by Cougar. Hey everybody, this is Chris with Overclockers Club. Yes, this is the Conquer 2 from Cougar, brand new. And there is an original Conquer. Now, I've never actually seen that case, so this is all new to me. Uh, while I was reviewing the Blazer, the Conquer 2 showed up. And as tempting as it was to rip the box open and take a look at it, I did not. Uh, I left it in the packing and I left the bag on it. All I've done is loosen the bag up at the bottom so that I can pull it off. So you're going to see it for the very first time. Uh, at the same time I do so holy moly and it looks like I set it up there backwards so let me swing it around make sure I got it on the sure I got it on here properly all right so there is the conquer 2 and this thing is really something you have to see in person. This thing is big and uh, quite impressive. Now I'll just sort of walk around and give you more of an up-close view of it. I still have to peel all the protective coating off of the glass. And when it's powered up, these uh, LED effects will be much more impressive too. And there's a single fan in front. And again, I have to peel all the, just like that, protective plastic off. And this also follows uh, a similar theme, although it's much more aggressive with the angles. But it follows a similar theme to the Blazer down here as far as being a uh, sort of an off-the-wall, open-air style case. Something that you don't usually see when you're usually surrounded by square or rectangular cases. And this case has quite a few features. I'll try to make sure we go through each one in detail. Most case manufacturers have a pretty bread and butter lineup of cases. A lot of times they use the same chassis or the same two or three chassis across their product line and they change the front fascia and the side panels, give it a new name, and they're good to go. And that's a formula that really works for uh, most of the manufacturers out there. And a few of the manufacturers have some real oddball, uh, interesting designs like the Conquer 2 here, for example. Now, if you just Google unusual case designs, which is what I did here, the first thing that came up was uh, a series of cases here. For example, you can see there's some really unusual, I guess that's not terribly unusual there other than the color, but there's uh, a different case design there from ID Cooling. There's the Omen. There's a good old Core P90. Again, that's still a standard case shape, just a different theme there on the color. There's the Conquer, the original Conquer from Cougar. There's the Level 10 Titanium Edition. These are all very different designs. But the point being, if you like something different and unusual, well, this might be just for you. So where do I really begin with this? Because there's a lot going on here. Uh, all the wild angles and the different panels that are coming in at oblique angles. Basically, this case is a case within a case. The inner chassis here actually pulls out. There's the handle. And there's several brackets here that you have to remove. And uh, they secure the chassis to the main uh, frame here, the main housing, I guess, or the outer shell, you could call it. Because you don't want that moving around. And the advantage there is you can do the complete system build. And I'll pull that inner chassis out here in a moment. But you can do your complete system build and then slide the entire chassis in and uh, power it up and you're up and running. And the Conquer 2 has 
a pretty good footprint here. It's about 14 inches wide across the base. That gives it a lot of stability. It's about 30 inches long from front to back and it's about 25 inches tall so that sort of gives you an idea of the space you'll need for a case like this and it would be a shame to stick this in a corner this really needs to be front and center now the case has these smoked glass side panels and they're the same on both sides and uh, it uses these fasteners to attach them. Now each one of these fasteners I removed already completely around the case and some of them were pretty stiff because uh, I think some of the paint when they when they paint the case gets into the threads and uh, I blew the dust off of the threads and I used a little bit of uh, this stuff right here TriFlow you can get this for five six bucks it's basically a Teflon Anytime there are panels I know I'm going to be removing, uh, I go ahead and put a dot of that Teflon lube, work it in and out a couple times, and it just makes everything flow so nicely. So you take those panels off, and it's got little rubber grommets in there, and this is pretty thin glass, but uh, they help isolate any vibration so your glass doesn't rattle. Plus, when your fastener tightens down you really don't want it to tighten down directly against the glass it really tightens against that little rubber shoulder there so I'll take this second panel off now and like I said a couple of these uh, fasteners were pretty tight I really had to crank on them with a screwdriver to get them out but now they go in and out very easily by hand and I'm just showing you what this uh, case looks like when the panels are removed uh, all the work you would do to your system, you would do with the chassis removed. And if you need to get in there for something, it's nice to be able to remove these side panels. And again, it's a very thin smoked glass. But now you can see the chassis a little more clearly through there. So, um, what I'll do is pull the chassis out now. So what you have are these stiffening brackets and they keep the side panels because this is sort of a hollow shell and without these brackets uh, the sides kind of want to move a little bit and again I did the same thing I took uh, everything apart and I went ahead and put a little bit of lube on the fasteners and that just allows me to be able to do this by hand so you have two fasteners at the bottom you have the one bracket at the top and there are four fasteners here on the side for another bracket. So they're pretty good at uh, making sure there's not a lot of flex with these uh, brackets. And this particular bracket here actually has imprinted or embossed that pops out there's an L and an R L and an R so you know which way to put it in because you sort of could put it in upside down not that that's a big deal so I got the top bracket off I got the bottom bracket off I got the bottom fasteners removed and actually there's one more set of brackets up here at the top To sort of stabilize the top of the chassis and these are actually sort of keyed so they go in one way you can't really put them in that way you can see one side's a little longer than the other and put those off to the side and I also went ahead and lubed all these connection points also okay now the chassis should pull right out and it slides there are a couple of rollers they look like the rollers on your kitchen cabinet drawers but that entire chassis there pulls right out and this is the inside of the shell Let's see if I can adjust the light so you can see a little better because it's dark way down in there but looks like you could just crawl right in there as big as that is 
And then these are the side guide rails that the chassis slides into. The rollers go into these guides and then a couple little like uh, ball rollers there. And then these are the two fastener points or the two threaded holes that secure the bottom of the chassis. I know it was hard to see that in the video earlier. And in the front of the case, there's another glass section right here. It's a smoked glass uh, piece there. So there's really not a whole lot to see in here. Uh, the I.O. panel also does come out because you need to connect all of your I.O. cables to all of the components on the chassis, like your motherboard. And it's a lot easier to make those connections uh, when you have the main chassis out than it is to try and get your hands in there and get things connected. So that's why that's removable. So I'll pull that out here in just a little bit. But let me bring the inner chassis up here so we can see it. And here is the main chassis or the inner chassis, inner frame, whatever you want to call it. Get it centered there. So these are the little rollers I was talking about. There are two of those, one on either side. But everything you're going to do from a system build standpoint is going to happen right here. This is where you'll install your motherboard, your radiator, fans, power supply. Everything gets installed here and then you slide this into the outer shell and you're ready to go. Now it does come with one included front fan. This is an RGB fan. And what I found a little interesting is the connector on it. I was expecting to see the usual dual connector system where you've got your regular three or four pin. If it's four pin, it would be a PWM connector to supply power and control to the fan. And then there's usually a second cable for the RGB uh, effects, but this has one single connector and that will plug into the uh, RGB controller and we'll look at that here in a little bit. But anyway, this fan uh, already comes installed. It's a 120 millimeter front fan. And this section here comes off. This is for, I'll have to break that fastener loose. But this is so that you get your power supply uh, installed here. And then for cable routing, you need access to it. And on the back side here, there's really no real easy way to get in there. So that's why that front shroud comes off. You also have a couple of uh, two and a half inch or SSD mounts here on the back. And then you've got two more mounts that'll accommodate either your two and a half inch uh, drives like your SSDs or your regular three and a half inch drives that would uh, mount to the back of the motherboard tray. There's the big orange pull handle. Got all of your PCIe slots. One thing I do like, this does have two vertical slots. So if you want to put a uh, graphics card in there vertically, you can do that. And then it has the standoffs here sort of built in for mounting your remote PCIe cable. And I have one of those, so I'll be able to show the graphics card uh, installed vertically. Uh, there's plenty of ventilation here. Of course, being an open case design, uh, I'm not too concerned about airflow. And over here, thing wants to slide around a little bit. In the front, you can put a couple of additional 120 millimeter fans or a 240 millimeter front radiator. On top, you can go with three 120 millimeter fans or whatever radiator combination you want. You can put a 120, uh, a 240, or a 360 radiator in the top. Now I'll be using the Heller 360 uh, to show off on the top of the case there. I took the front fastener out here. I also took the fastener out for this bracket. This is a pump mounting bracket. If you're going to do a custom uh, liquid cooled system, this gives you a way to mount the pump to the floor there. So this shroud here now, and this is all plastic, slide it back and pull it forward, sort of, there we go. So this entire shroud comes out which allows you to have access now 
to the area where you would want to run all your cables. And there are actually provisions here to mount a fan in the bottom of the case if you have room to do so. Sometimes your power supplies, uh, by the time you get them in here and get all your cables stashed, might be a little tricky getting a fan in there. But at least you've got mounting provisions for a 120 millimeter fan, if you like. Now, even though they don't really supply any additional brackets for additional hard drives, uh, it just looks to me this space is just begging to have another hard drive. So it looks to me like you could get maybe two more three and a half inch drives in that space. Maybe even more if you're a little creative and you're good at fabricating some brackets. It just looks like you could take advantage of that if you wanted to pack a couple more hard drives in there. And the same thing for this area right here. If you didn't use a uh, vertical GPU mount, if you just went with the standard GPU, which would be up in this area, there's enough space here. It looks to me like you could, again, fabricate a small bracket with some standoffs and you could put another three and a half inch drive right there in that area. And while I'm on that subject, again, if you're creative and don't mind drilling a few extra holes, it, it just looks to me like you could put one, possibly two more three and a half inch drives uh, on this side of the case. Of course, if you use a big liquid cooled radiator on the top, uh, you may not have quite as much space. But anyway, uh, the point being, it looks to me like there are opportunities for additional space for hard drive storage. And a little more detail uh, on the hard drive brackets on the back of the motherboard tray. Um, thing wants to slide around on me a lot. So anyway, there's a tab on the bottom. There's a slot, so you just put the tab there into the slot, rock it forward, and then tighten the fastener. Same thing with the two and a half inch drive uh, mount. It's got a couple of tabs, a couple of slots. Put in there, rock it forward, and then attach the fastener. There it goes, and you're done. Looking at the bottom of the case, I've got it tipped up so we can see the bottom. But at the front of the case, there is a single rubber pad to support the front. And then in the middle of the case, there are two of these sort of uh, rubber pads that are a little thicker to support the middle of the case. And then at the bottom of the case, or this is the back of the case, I should say, there are two large rubber pads there. So that should keep the case from vibrating on the floor, from sliding around on the floor, and from leaving any scratch marks on the floor. And looking at the top of the case from the rear to the front, there's the I.O. panel, has the usual headphone jack, microphone jack, couple of USB 3.0 ports, a very nice USB 3.1 port right there, a power button, and then this here is your RGB uh, control, which we'll see when we get the case all powered up. And this is a little loose right now, flops around because I loosen the fasteners that are uh, up underneath uh, because this panel here will need to be removed during the system build to facilitate that, but we'll see that here in a little bit. Looking down across the front then, uh, you have these three ribs, and then the th same three ribs here continue down. That's part of the LED uh, effects there. You'll see that again when we get the case powered up. And then there's a nice carbon fiber uh, inlay there, and that continues down the front of the case. And of course, down at the bottom, that's where that front fan is that was attached to the uh, inner chassis, but without that you can pretty much look right through the right through the inside of the case. Looks like the inside of a C-130 cargo plane almost. That's huge. And again here's the inside of the case frame or shell I guess you could call it. I put a light in here so things should look a little better. Now I was talking earlier about the I.O. panel and how it's attached so there's a fastener right here, and I already loosened these up, and another one, if I can get to it, right here. That one's a little stiff. I have to use a screwdriver on that. All right, so I got that other fastener out, and then this whole I.O. panel here uh, drops down. And let's see, there's a 
tie here that keeps all the wires together. So let's see if these are really long enough to reach. Maybe I don't have to drop that panel out after all. Let's see. Uh, no, these are very long, but I'm going to say not quite long enough. So what I can do is cut this cable tie here, which should let this drop. There we go. So this whole panel here can come out and there are a couple of plugs up front. So we can take those out. That's part of the uh, RGB lighting. So these connect to the banks of LEDs and those ribs I showed earlier. And looking inside the hardware box, you got a couple of these Velcro ties here for cable management. And the bag of all kinds of screws and fasteners for uh, motherboard installation, fan installation. Uh, some hex standoffs there. And the other box that came with it. If I can get my wiring harness out of the way. Okay, inside this box is your, let's see, core box CRGB controller. This little guy right here, and it has a couple magnets embedded in the back so you can stick it anywhere on a metal surface and it'll keep it from moving around too much. And then the power connector to get power. It's a SATA connector there. But this gets power over to the core box there and then another connector to integrate it with your RGB uh, on a motherboard if you have a motherboard that supports that. Back to the wiring harness there. There's the I.O. panel. I pulled it out completely. And looking at the connectors, there's the usual USB 3.0 connector. There's a USB 3.1 connector if the motherboard you're using supports that. Uh, some RGB connectors there, again, to uh, integrate the RGB into your system. There's your motherboard power switch. And uh, let's see what else is there. SATA connector to get power to the I.O. panel. And is that it? There's your HD audio connector right there. Now, if you want to, you can take these little orange side wings off. There's one screw right here at the back. You take that screw out and this whole thing slides back a little and then you can remove it. Or actually some key slides. There we go. What they do is, uh, I want to be very gentle, I don't damage the finish on the other side, but they've got three screws and they go into these key slots. So this thing is really easy to disassemble. Now this little foam pad section there is for the glass panel that goes on there. It sort of rests on this little uh, foam pad there. So that's what that's for. But these wings are actually all plastic. They, they look like they're a, an anodized aluminum, but they're actually a painted plastic. They have a very nice finish on them. But if you wanted to change the color, it would be very easy to take these off and paint them any color you want if uh, you want to sort of mod your case that way. And really many of these panels, uh, again, as you can see there, if you really wanted to change some of the colors, you could do that without a lot of effort. And I'll just take it one step further and remove this panel right here. And it's held on with a uh, hex drive fastener in two places there, one here, and then there's a screw there, a little Phillips screw that I already removed. So, what you do is you take those screws out. That one had a little bit of spring pressure on it. And then this one comes out. And then the top one here. And that panel, that panel there will come out. I kind of tip it forward. So there's a tab there on the end that goes into that slot right there. And then you can take 
that entire side section out. So again, during a system build, uh, this level of disassembly will probably come in handy. It is system build time, so now I have the chassis up on the table. And I actually decided to make this case my own system case, rather than just throw the test system in it and then uh, yank it out. So the motherboard, this is my personal uh, daily driver motherboard. This is the Asus Rampage 5 Extreme, right there. Came out around 2014. And it was a beast in its day. This was the king of the hill. It was around $549, brand new, I believe. Now, by today's standards, it is a relic. It's an antique, but I still use it every day, and uh, it's served me well. So it is going to be right there here in a few moments. So there is the uh, Asus Rampage 5 Extreme motherboard installed. And I did not have to relocate any of the studs. There is a row of holes here on the very edge. Uh, if your motherboard needs those, we can see on the back here, there's the extra set right there. So I'm using this one on the end and this one, and there's one more uh, underneath this mount. But we have one, two, three extra places for standoffs if you have a motherboard that requires it. This is an EATX, an extended ATX. It's about a half inch longer here on this end, so it sticks out a little bit more than a regular ATX. But as you can see, the system uh, is capable of supporting up to a CEB, which is very similar to an EATX. So there is the Cougar BXM850 power supply. It is not fully modular. I guess you could call it partially modular. So I've got a couple of the cables that I uh, had plugged in when I had it installed down here in the blazer. So I'm sort of pulling components off of that system build and putting them into this one. The Heller 360 is now installed. Fits like a glove, no problems. And of course the power supply now is also installed. Just a matter of doing some cable routing and getting the rest of the components in there. And I'm going to install the graphics card vertically, right here in these slots, which requires a special cable. This is a relocation cable for your PCI uh, slot. And uh, this one here, and, and there are other manufacturers that make these, but this is from Fractal Design. This is the Flex VRC25. And it installs, it comes with a couple of standoffs uh, to mount on the floor here, but actually since these uh, raised parts are already integrated into the case, I don't need to do that. I simply need to uh, install this, actually bolt that down right there, and I should be good to go. And all you do is plug one end of the cable into your PCIe slot on the motherboard, and now that this base is secured, I can put the graphics card in. Now the graphics card is installed vertically, uh, one small snag though, the uh, standoffs here, or the provisions in the case, the holes don't quite line up. You can see that one's off a little bit, and then the one in the front, the standoff is like right between the two holes right there. It's not a huge deal, and this particular cable may not just be set up for this particular application. I don't know how other cables would be, but uh, it's pretty secure here. I use these two fasteners at the front and the card's really not going anywhere so I'm not too worried about it. I went ahead and powered the system up just to make sure everything worked. I still have a way to go towards getting everything installed. But you can see the two RGB fans there that I used to populate those two 120 millimeter slots. And then you can see the action there of the uh, RGB system and of course this is the fan that is included that one is already in the case and then those three fans are uh, part of the Heller 360 all-in-one cooler and then the IO panel I sort of have temporarily sitting up on top and here's what it looks like all powered up and 
And squatting down here a little lower, you can see the fans. That front fan right there is the one, again, that comes with the case. From the side here, you can see the RGB fans there that are part of the Heller 360 all-in-one cooler. And of course, you can definitely see the pump. And then coming around the back of the case, it's kind of strange to see something that is all open like that. And there's the graphics card that is in there vertically. And the back of the Cougar power supply. And then coming around to the side here. Now, this is of course where your cable management will pay off the most. The smoked side panels do sort of cover it up. I didn't put as much time in there as I should, but Case does a pretty good job of hiding a sloppy cable management job. And I also should point out, I don't have all of the cross braces uh, installed on the back here just yet, so that's why it looks a little more open. So I still need to get those installed. I installed two of my six three and a half inch hard drives on the back of the motherboard tray where the mounting provisions um, are. But I decided to take advantage of the space still left in front of the power supply. There's quite a bit of area right here. So I built my own little hard drive storage uh, that'll hold four hard drives. So I'm going to see how well that fits. And I really didn't want to pull the chassis out of there since I had it all buttoned up. Even though it is convenient to do, I went ahead and just pulled the side panels off here. And that allowed me to slip my little hard drive um, mounting system into the bottom. And there's plenty of room. And it turns out that uh, I had to flip this around 180 so that the I.O. and power uh, connectors are actually on the front side. Uh, it gave me a little more clearance. It was hard to squeeze everything in there between uh, this small amount of space uh, up against the power supply. So anyway, it actually fits in there quite nicely. So now I can get the side panels back on. Everything is all buttoned up. I got the side panels back on, which is pretty easy to do. And there's my homemade hard drive storage system in there. I'll probably pull that back out and paint it black so it blends in a little better. But even then, if you didn't know it was there, it's not terribly obvious. So I've got Prime 95 running to stress the CPU and the fans are cranked all the way up. CPU is a 5820K, which again is old by today's standards, but it still gets the job done. So the sound really is not bad considering you really have a radiator completely exposed at the top there and with all the other open sections to the case. Now, the type of fan you use and the speed, all of those things will factor into how loud things are, but I have my decibel meter right here. So let's see. So really, that's, that's not too bad. I was expecting to see numbers a little higher than that. But like I said, it depends on the number of fans you use and the fan speed, uh, things like that. All right, time for a little thermal imaging. Again, the system is cranked up on a mild overclock, 4.1 gigahertz on the 5820K from Intel. And we'll just sort of pan around here. You can see there's the radiator at 
the top we can look directly down on it. And you can see a little heat peeking out there from some of the openings in the side of the case. You get a lot of reflection off the glass, so that doesn't really tell you a lot. And then looking at the back, there's the IO panel on the motherboard. And you can see the radiator. You can see where the heat is being pushed up and hitting the top panel, so that gets a little warm. But there's plenty of room for the air to get out. And there's the pump. Top of the graphics card, exhaust part of the graphics card, and then when we look over here, there's the power supply. And the back side of the case, or I should say the, this is usually behind the motherboard. And again, we can kind of look at the radiator, get some reflection off the glass, and then you see a little heat peeking through anywhere where it's open. And then back around to the front and then across the top. The RGB effects are really impressive when the lights are on, but when the lights are off, the system really comes to life. Right now I just have it set up to run through a sort of a random series of colors. And I like that. You can also set it to go uh, all solid or variations, of course, just like you have uh, with any RGB system. So I'll just be quiet here and let you enjoy the show for a moment. Like the Blazer that I just reviewed, um, the Conquer 2 is also a very different case. It goes off uh, in a design direction that is just way out there. It's not for everybody, which is the same thing I said with the Blazer, but if you like something that's different and functional, that's another thing. It's not just some wild hodgepodge of funky angles and stuff. You've got room for hard drives. Uh, you've got the modular, uh, the way you can pull the, the chassis out, do your build and slide the chassis in. That's a great idea. Uh, it's a large case. You got plenty of room for a full size uh, EATX or a CEB motherboard. So all of those things come together into making this a great case. Pricing on this is around $330. So it's not by any means an inexpensive or cheap case, but there's a lot going on here and you do get a lot of bang for your buck. So I'm going to give this the Overclockers Club Editor's Choice Award. And the Blazer also earned the Editor's Choice Award. So I've got two back-to-back -back Editor's Choice Awards from the same manufacturer. The first time I've ever had that happen. But they deserve it. They earned it. So this is Chris with Overclockers Club. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.